Okay, in this lesson we're going to, uh, we've already derived from uh, this website, and if you want to look at it again you can, the cosine of x plus y, it was called alpha plus beta on that page. The cosine of x plus y is equal to cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. And in this PowerPoint we're going to derive the other three, the difference for the difference of two angles for cosine and then the sum and difference for sine. So we'll find the cos of x minus y next here, and I'm going to substitute negative y in place of y here, here, and here. And one of the properties of the cosine of sine of y is that the cosine of a negative rotation is the same as the cosine of the positive rotation. So the cosine of negative x equals cos x, or the cosine of negative y equals cos y. That is not the same uh, for the sine. The sine of a negative rotation is the negative of the sine of the positive rotation. So cos of negative x is equal to negative sine x. So in place of the uh, sine negative y, we'll substitute negative sine y. And then the only thing actually that simplifies here is we get cos x minus y equals, and this is already finished, cos x cos y, but negative sine x times another negative sine y would be plus sine x sine y. So that's the difference relation for the cosine function. So a way to remember this is for cosine when it says cos x plus y, it's cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. So notice that's the opposite sign here. So for cos x minus y, it's cos x cos y plus sine x sine y opposite sign here. Now we're going to look at the sine of x plus y, find a formula for that, a trig identity for that, and we're going to use these co-function identities over here. And so uh, we already know that the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of pi over 2 minus that angle. So think of this as the angle. So the sine of x plus y, think of that as one thing, is the cosine of pi over 2 minus that angle. Now I'm going to expand this out. This is a difference of two angles using cos x minus y here. And so before I get into this identity, I'm going to remove the brackets and then group the pi and the minus x together. Pi subtract, pi over 2 minus x, and then we'll have minus y in the end. So think of this as the first angle, the x in this identity, and the minus y as the second angle. So using this identity, it goes cos x, cos y, cos first angle times the cos of the second angle. So the cos of the first angle times the cos of the second angle plus, and then the sine of the first angle, there's the first angle right there, times the sine of the last angle, the second angle, so the sine of y. Now, the, the cosine of pi over 2 minus x the cosine of pi over 2 minus x is the same as sine x. So if we can replace this with sine x. So we actually have sine x cos y plus, and the sine of pi over 2 minus x is the same as the cosine of x from the cofunction identities. So we can replace this sine pi over 2 minus x with cos x. So the sine of x plus y is equal to, notice for the sine it goes sine x cos y. The cosines were cos x cos y, uh, two cos at the beginning, two sines in the end. The sine is not quite the same, it goes sine x plus y is sine x cos y plus cos x sine y. So notice for the sine, there's a sine and a cos in each part. But notice for the sine, if there's, you're adding the two angles, there is an addition between the two different terms here. On the next page, we'll take a look at the sine of x minus y. That's the last one we're going to look at. And we'll start from uh, sine x plus y, the one we derived at the bottom of the previous page. And very similar to when we derived the cosine x minus y, we'll substitute negative y in place of y everywhere. And so on the left here, we have sine x minus y. Now remember, the cosine of negative y is the same as the cosine of y. So we can substitute uh, cos y in place of cos negative y. And sine of negative y is equal to negative sine y. And so we get sine of x minus y is equal to sine x cos y. And then this will change this sign here. A positive times a negative is a, a negative. So we'll have minus cos x sine y. And we can... Um, recap all of these sum, ang sum difference relations or uh, compound angle relations into these two formulas. They actually handle both the cos and both the sine. So the cosine of x plus y 
is equal to cos x cos y. Notice the opposite signs here. So with a plus, we do minus sine x sine y. With the cos sine of x minus y, we would do cos x cos y plus sine x sine y. For the sine of x plus y, notice the signs are the same. So the sine of x plus y is sine x cos y plus cos x sine y. For the sine of x minus y, it's sine x cos y minus cos x sine y. Now we're going to take a look at simplifying some trig expressions in this first example. It says use an appropriate compound angle formula to write as a trig ratio, then find the exact value. Notice that this goes sine cos cos sine. Okay? And if you remember what we did in the last page, okay, the ones that go sine cos cos sine, that's a sine of, and um, it had a subtraction sign in the middle. Okay, so we're using the sine x minus y one. So this would have to equal the sine of three pi over four minus two pi over three, because those are the two angles. That's like the x and the y. Now getting a common denominator, I if I multiply the common denominator would be twelve. If I multiply this by three top and bottom, it'll change it into nine pi over twelve. And this one by four, because three times four is twelve, so four times two pi is eight pi. And then if we simplify 9 pi over 12 minus 8 pi over 12, we get pi over 12. So this actually is equal to the sine of pi over 12. So we're actually going to find an exact value for the sine of pi over 12 using this expression. So the sine of pi over 12 equals this. And so we look on the unit circle to find the exact values for all these sines and cosines. So 3 pi over 4 is here. The exact value for the sine would be root 2 over 2. Let's write that all down. The cosine of 2 pi over 3, there's 2 pi over 3. The cosine is the x-coordinate, so we substitute negative a half in place of cosine 2 pi over 3. The cosine of 3 quarters pi, 3 quarters pi is here. That's the cosine, negative root 2 over 2. And the sine of 2 pi over 3, again, 2 pi over 3 is here. The sine would be root 3 over 2. So expanding uh, these products together, root 2 times 1 would be, well, actually negative 1 would be negative root 2. 2 times 2 is 4 in the denominator. We have a, uh, a product of two negatives here, so a plus, and root 2 times root 3 is root 6. 2 times 2 is 4 in the denominator. So we actually have a common denominator, so we can write sine pi over 12 as, and the reason I'm writing the root 6 first is because it's a positive value, so root 6 minus root 2 over 4. So that's the exact value for the sine of pi over 12. Uh, in example number two, we're asked to use an appropriate formula to determine an exact value for the cosine of 7 pi over 12. Now, what you have to do is find two angles that add to 7 pi over 12 or subtract to 7 pi over 12. And you'll get the same value. It really doesn't matter which, which of the two you find. Two angles that do subtract, and you do have to do some hunting around the unit circle to find these, that do subtract to 7 pi over 12 are 11 pi over 6 and 5 pi over 4. And what, what you might want to do is, as you're looking at the unit circle and searching for those, is get a common denominator, write them all over 12, and then look for two that subtract or add to 7 pi over 12. Now, the common denominator here would be 12, so I multiply this by 2 top and bottom, so 11 pi times 2 is 22 pi, and 6 times 2 is 12. Uh, multiplying this one by 3 top and bottom becomes 15 pi over 12. And then if you subtract, you get 7 pi over 12. So the difference of these uh, does give us 7 pi over 12. So I can use the cosine of uh, the difference between two angles uh, to find the exact value for the cosine of 7 pi over 12. So it's actually the cosine of 11 pi over 6 minus 5 pi over 4. And remember, cosine the difference goes like this. It's cos the first times cos the second plus sine the first times sine the second. That's the cosine of x minus y or alpha minus beta identity. And so we need the unit circle to find these values. Uh, 11 pi over 6 is this rotation here, so the cosine is root 3 over 2. 5 pi over 4 is this angle right here, and we're looking for the cosine, so it's negative root 2 over 2. 11 pi over 6 is right here again. The sine is negative a half, so negative a half goes in place of the sine of 11 pi over 6. And 5 pi over 4 is here. Its uh, y is negative root 2 over 2. So multiplying these together, we get negative root 6 over 4. And multiplying these together, we get plus root 2 over 4. Again, we have a common denominator. So the cosine of 7 pi over 12 is root 2 minus root 6 over 4.